Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Welcome to the Green Aqua Gallery. Guys, today we're going to talk about a topic that is often neglected in our videos, and that is fish selection. Stay with us. So why do we neglect fish selection in the first place? Because usually we do aquascaping videos, we do the tanks, we set up the tanks and then we fill them up with water. Obviously we cannot introduce the fish from day one. So the fish selection is something that needs to be done after the scape is ready because we ideally want to do something with the fish uh, that should match the scape itself. So I'm usually waiting one or two weeks after the, the scape is finished and the plants start to grow and then I'm going to decide what's going to happen and I know that this is the same with Tommy. So usually the creator of the scape will decide what kind of fish he or she wants to use in the scape for the long run but Lori, our fish expert, is always helping us and he's always making suggestions as to what kind of uh, you know, fish we want to use and what are the novelties, what's available at Green Aqua, uh, what's missing at Green Aqua because not all fish are available all the time. In contrary to the popular belief, aquascaping is not about plants, it's not about rocks, it's about the harmony of plants, fish and the hardscape itself. So we ideally do not want to neglect this topic. So. Let's go and I'm going to take a tour of the gallery with Chubby here having a 7 kilo camera. Check this out. Let's do this whole thing in order of appearance. I'm going to show you the first tank which was built by me. This is a Brazilian type of tank. It has all the nice and red plants in the background and I'm going to have a little cheat sheet here with me because I'm not sure that I know all the name or the Latin name of the fish. Well this is easy because we've got the blue neon tetras which is the Paracaryodon inesi in this tank. It's a beginner's fish. They do shoal together, they do swim together quite nicely. They usually swim in the middle as you can see or swim at the top. They don't usually go downstairs. The second tank is Tommy's Ivagumi tank, it's a great Frodo stone tank with just a couple of plants, foreground plants mainly and some mosses and we've got two types of fish in here. We've got the white cloud mountain minnow and this is the uh, Tanictis albonubis. This is the gold version. This has red fins but it does not have the black stripes on the body. It's recommended for beginners. This is an easy fish, you can actually keep it. It's resistant to diseases. It's not a shoaling fish, do not stay together for social reasons. And we've got these, instead of the Swabwa repens, the Burmese Raminos. We did not have success with the Burmese Raminos Tetras. Probably the pH was uh, too low. Oh, what I wanted to say that we're not talking about the edge-eating fish here. Almost in every tank that, that we set up, we use algae-eating fish, shrimp and snails. Let's move on to the third tank, which is the uh, tank scaped by Fukada-san and it was rescaped a little bit by me. Both of these tanks will actually be rescaped in the future. We're gonna have something new in both of them. Stay tuned uh, to see what's happening here. All right, so what we have here, obviously we have the uh, Trigonostigma espe, which is the lamb chop rasbora. I really like this. This is a good shoaling fish. It's a lot, lot smaller and thinner than the Hengeli or the Harlequin that most people use in their tanks. They swim in the middle and at the top regions of the tank, as you can see, and they don't hide. So even if I scare them, they will just come out. Uh, they are very curious in, in what's happening here. Check out the colors of these fish. I really love that. I would just take the opportunity to do some little advertising for the new green aqua food fish food that is coming really soon to the Green Aqua website. This is not a sales pitch, honestly. Ever since that Lori is feeding these fish with our food, the colors just popped incredibly. So we're really happy to have some good quality food for these guys. And obviously we've got some CBS shrimps, the crystal black shrimp. This is something that would add to the detail on the foreground. Let's move on to the fourth tank here, which was caved by Tommy just recently. We've got the Raminos tetra, Hemigramus bleheri in this tank. I really like these fish. These are the fish that would shoal together nicely. It's the best 
shoaling fish, by my humble opinion. We wanted ruby tetra, the Axerodea riese, actually Tommy wanted that, but uh, those were not red enough by the time that we got them. So another note here, the fish that you see in your local fish shop or at Green Aqua in the fish tanks, after they arrive, they, they do not have the colors properly. They need to be properly fed and they need to be under proper circumstances for them to gain the, the vivid colors that you see usually in the show tanks here at Green Aqua. As they swim together nicely, they will add some dynamics of the tank. So when you select your fish for your own home tank, you really have to, you know, take into consideration that fish are gonna be the only thing that will give motion to the scape because plants ideally would not move. Next tank is Victor's and Tommy's tank. This is the biggest tank at Green Aqua, which is a 650 liter classic nature aquarium style tank. And um, it has two types of fish basically, and some shrimp obviously that we're gonna talk about later. You've got the glass bloodfin tetra, Trionobrama filigera. It's a very vivid fish, lots of movement in the tank. Not a good shoaling fish, but it's good for beginners and it swims in the middle and the upper regions. Same true for the five band barb, the Desmo Puntius Pentazona, which is a barb that is really, you know, happy with the other fish, not as aggressive as, as the tiger barbs would be, which we have in, in our next tank, a variety of that. Uh, so you can actually use them in a community fish tank with, with a lot of other types of fish. They do swim together a bit, but you will see other fish in other regions from time to time. Let's move on to the second biggest tank of Green Aqua, which is the 450, built by me recently. And the interesting thing about this tank is that I put an accent on the top of the tank. And I wanted a scape that is a very natural looking scape. It's like an underwater forest here. And this tank is actually I'm very proud to say one of the favorites uh, of the Green Aqua customers here. And we've got a special variety of tiger barbs here, which can be real assholes sometimes. So it's not recommended for them to be kept with other fish. It's called the Puntius Tetrazona Var Platinum. So this is the platinum version. This one, as you can see, it's a yellowish color, but it, you know, it stands out from the scape quite a lot. So it will add a lot of movement. They swim together quite nicely here. And even the algae eaters would swim together with them, which is quite nice. Actually, Lori here has written that it's not a shoaling fish, swims everywhere in all regions, but as you can see, in this quantity for some reason maybe they're just you know hungry this was it for the biggest tanks of green aqua and let's move on to the next tank which is the uh Chavi, can you move on this is the paludarium here this is tommy's favorite fish selection just two types of fish one of the fish is the amber tetra and the other one is the Kubotai Rasbora, the Hippesobricon amandae and the Micro Devario Kubotai. One of them is really green, and I think that this is the only greenish tint fish that I know. The other one is red and compensate each other quite nicely, and Tommy wants to use these guys all the time in big numbers in their Iwagumi. These are small fish, so they can be kept with shrimps as well. This one has the dragon stones and it has the cold mist coming up through a hose and you've got a waterfall that is watering these uh, Utricularia graminifolia plants, which are carnivore plants actually. I want to talk about the favorite Daniels of my childhood. The uh, zebra fish, Daniel Reiro, is the long finned version that I have here. It's not distracting the view from the scape because their colors would not pop out and you know, why is this my favorite fish from the childhood? Because I really like the way they move. So they kind of start to move very dynamically in one direction and then suddenly halt. And then they will start turning around and go to the other direction. I really like these uh, varieties of fish and I could just observe them for hours. Talking about what kind of fish are suitable, for aquascaping. I would say that most small fish that would not harm or eat the plants like cichlids would. The exception is dwarf cichlids. But other than that, you know, you don't want to have fish that are too big. If you have those, those would distort the scale of the tank. I wanted to talk about algae eaters from the plant holding tank's perspective because 
Usually we just have the plants here and we've got Crossocalius reticulatus and the Crossocalius siamensis, which is the uh, silver flying fox and the Siamese algae eaters. And those are the fish that would eat the thread algae, which is a CO2 related algae and that sometimes appear because these plants came from the nursery and they were grown immersed. So some kind of CO2 related algae might appear. And this is why we have these guys here. And what else do we have? We have the Cliton corona snails and we've got the Amano shrimp and we've got the Otocinclus affinis. And these are the, the classic algae eating fish that we usually have in all tanks all the time. Maybe for smaller tanks you don't want to have these uh, crossocalius types of thread algae eating fishes because they are quite big so you don't want to have that. There's one small aquarium that I want to talk about and that is Danny's Daniel's Aquarium. Aaron made a cinematic video about this and uh, this is the 30 liter tank which has the very small Boraras, the dwarf rasbora, Boraras maculatus. It's a very beautiful nano fish. It's actually one of the smallest, if not the smallest nano fish in the hobby. It is good for inexperienced aquascapers. The problem with these guys is that they're sometimes really shy. So they would hide away. As you could see now, they're not swimming here in the foreground. As soon as they see the movement, they're curious and, and they're trying to come towards me because they know that I will feed them. But otherwise, talking of food, you will need to give them like nano fish food, which means that the grain size of that food should be really small. And this is something that many beginners do wrong. They would buy like a general fish food, good for the red neon tetras or something else, but they would try to not crush it and just feed it to these guys. Chubby, follow me. We're gonna go to this round tank which is the biggest mixture. It's the, the only community tank at Green Aqua. As you can see, we've got quite a few types. Let me see what I have, a big mess. Three spot guramis, pearl guramis, red phantom tetra, blue neon tetra, and some corridoras. This is a good example that you can actually keep quite a few types of fish. I don't really like to do that. I want to go for a minimalist style. So as you saw before, usually in the, even in the big tanks, we only have one or two species of fish, which would compensate. But many people really like to have a couple of types of fish because they so fall in love with the colors, the body shapes, the behavior of certain fish that they want to have them together. This is tank number 15 with the black neon tetras, the Hippesobricon Herbert Axel Rodi, which is a classical nature aquarium style fish. This tank was actually aquascape during the India workshop. That was a really popular event and thanks guys for all the support that, that you give us from India. These fish, the black neon tetra, have a minimalist color. They swim in the upper or the middle regions. They swim together nicely and it's a fish that is really suitable for beginners. Next tank was caved by Tommy. This is the minimalist Iwagumi style tank and uh, it has the celestial pearl daniels in them which is one of the most popular nano tank fish. Sometimes they can be really shy. I would suggest you to have a kind of a pulling fish. We call pulling fish the fish that would pull them out by being brave. And if you introduce them, then these guys, the celestial pearl daniels, would see that nothing will happen and nobody will eat the other kind of fish. So actually they would come out together. We're going to move to the rat tank here. The rat tank is, is red still. And this was, has the blue emperor tetra in them. The blue color of these fish, even though they're a little bit big for this uh, 60p tank, would compensate the reds of the plant. These fish can be a little bit aggressive. Okay, moving on to the next tank. This is the rainbow threadfin fish, which is quite a neglected fish in the threadfin fish family. I don't know why, because the delicate lines and fins and the whole beautiful contrast of the, of the fins in this, uh, you know, little beautiful fish and the body shape is great. Check out the beautiful colors in their eyes and around 
the gills there. Even though you would think that these fish are bigger, their mouth is not as big. So you would need to give them fish food that has small granules. And if they have some companions that are more aggressive and would feed first, that's also a problem. So I would not recommend you to keep these guys together with some fish that would jump at the food and would not leave any to these guys. So what you see here is Fukada San Steng, double IAPLC winner. He did a great duel at Green Aqua and he won the duel so he got us to keep his tank for a longer time here and you've got the green neon tetras in this tank these guys are easy to keep they swim in the middle or the upper regions they can be a nice addition to a very good layout here there are golden tetras in this tank and you don't see them because they hide in this little valley in there and they never come out so you would need to get some pulling fish probably to pull them out. The shiny color in nature is actually protection against the type of worm that they can get. All right we have got to the last tank here which was actually escaped by Tommy and this is a small nano tank with the uh, least rasbora. I would think that if you really love fish as much as I do, you guys should consider the fish selection after you have built your beautiful planted tank. Do not have many species, just have one or two shoaling fish suitable for the tank size that you have. Those would, you know, create an ecosystem that would be very healthy. The scape will come out and the whole beauty of this whole ecosystem, this round thing in your planted tank will come alive and you and your visitors and your family will enjoy it as much as we do in our gallery, in our homes. And with that, I think we concluded the fish selection episode. Let us know what kind of fish you have at home. I'm sure I missed a lot of types of fish that, that we use here. Let us know what we missed and maybe we will do another episode uh, the next time and we can use those types of fish that you suggested us to have in one of the next bills perhaps. All right? Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't do so yet. Don't forget to hit that bell button to get notified of our future uploads. This is very important for you to even know that we uploaded a video and don't forget that we have the membership through which you could support the video production of this channel. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye.